Okay, so mini FPV drone racing has become a very popular, very real thing recently. And of course, eSheen has dominated the market. But this is the latest entry from JJ Pro. This is the T1 85mm mini FPV racer. And let's take a look and see what we get. Of course, we have a nice single page instruction sheet there. And it's actually English on one side and Chinese on the other. It gives you a little bit of information about uh, binding it to either DSM-2, DSM-X receiver, Wakira D7, or a Tyrannus. So I don't have a Wakira D7 transmitter anymore, and I don't have a Tyrannus transmitter. And this receiver is an all-in-one receiver and flight controller, as far as I know. So I don't believe I'm going to be able to bind this to my FlySky FS I6 transmitter. So I think my only solution would be to solder a module into my transmitter that is compatible with either DSM-2 or DSM-X. So I might have to modify one of my FSI-6 transmitters to fly this, but here is the T1 from JJ Pro. We've got our all-in-one uh, flight controller slash uh, receiver right here. Um, we've got our USB port, of course, for programming it. It's probably got clean flight on there. You can flash beta flight on there if you really want. We've got uh, an interesting wide-angle lens here and uh, all-in-one FPV camera and video transmitter. Esheen has produced a large number of these, but this does look quite different than uh, anything else that uh, Esheen's produced. It looks just a tad bit different, but uh, let's see what else we've got in this lovely little package here. It is very nicely packed. It should survive uh, shipping rather well. Of course, we've got a battery and a set of rotors. And these rotors are very similar to the rotors that come on the Esheen QX80 there. And we also have a spare set of motor grommets to hold the motors in place, some spare rubber bands to uh, hold the camera in place. Uh, another spare set of rotors, and um, it looks like a USB battery charger and an extra piece of Velcro for attaching the batteries to the bottom of the aircraft. So that is everything you get with the JJ Pro T1. And let's take a look at the T1 compared to the Esheen QX85. They do have considerably different frames. It is a tad bit heavier, and of course these motors look uh, pretty much about the same. And the camera, well the frame is actually a little different. This is a nicer looking frame. I kind of like this uh, carbon fiber frame a little bit better than this one, but this one is a much lighter frame. That's a nice looking frame. Let's plug a battery in and see if we can test out this uh, FPV camera at the very least and we will go ahead and pull this lens cap off there and we will turn on our FPV monitor here of course I usually like to use my Esheen EV800 FPV goggles but However you fly, FPV is up to you, and some people like to fly with one of these monitors, and I personally like to use these to uh, record the video with. So there's the video. It looks like it was bleeding into another channel, so it's a good, strong video stream. And let's see, it looks... It looks all right. A uh, little, you know, I mean, it's not, not quite as smooth as, like, the QX95s. But it does handle low light, you know, pretty decently. So that's a good thing. And, you know, it's got a very nice wide angle lens on it. Nicely positioned right in the front there. So we're going to have to see if we can get a module soldered into one of our FSI6 transmitters. 
Okay, so a friend of mine let me borrow a Spectrum DX6i transmitter and I was able to bind it to my T1 Mini FPV quadcopter from JJ Pro. Okay, so to bind a DX6i to the JJ Pro T1, you plug the T1's battery in, wait about 10 seconds for the light to start blinking a little faster, then you hold the trainer switch up while turning on the uh, transmitter and that puts it into bind mode. They will bind to each other. The next step is going to go into the receiver tab in Clean Flight. You're going to want to check and make sure that all your channels are mapped properly. So when you press up and down on the throttle, that the throttle moves up and down. And when you press left and right on the yaw, the yaw moves left and right. And same with the roll and the pitch. Now, whenever I first bound, these were all on the wrong channels. So you might actually have to go into the command line interface and remap the channels and it's really simple to do um, basically you're just going to type map AETR1234 that's um, aileron elevator throttle rudder 1234 so that's how I map the channel out you may have to go into your DX6i and reverse one or two of the channels and the very last step is going to be arming the aircraft. For me to be able to get this to arm, the uh, instructions here, which are not the clearest instructions in the world, say that it uses the traditional arm disarm, which is disarm like that and arm like that. That did not work. And I set the arm to be auxiliary one, which is the gear switch right here. And for it to work, whenever I would flip the switch, the uh, arm would stay gray there, it wouldn't turn green. This actually has to turn green. Even though it goes into the proper range, this was still not turning green. And to get this to turn green, you have to go into your Spectrum DX6i, go up into the menu, go into Travel Adjustment, set your throttle to 125%, and then flip the switch up and go to the gear section and set it to around 84 percent that way it will actually turn green when it arms and the reason is when you go into the receiver tab and I go to the minimum throttle you'll see it's 1070 and go to the maximum throttle it's 1870 when you go into the modes tab uh, these two have to fall into that range right there and if you flip this button and this little green dot is above that range you need to use the travel adjustment to be able to bring that green line back into the range so now this aircraft will actually arm and we can take it out for a little test flight well it's a bit cold outside but we've still got to get a test flight Okay, so I took the JJ Pro T1 out for a little test flight and it seemed a little unresponsive and I thought maybe it was the PID settings, but I went here programming in new PID settings, so that didn't have a change. So what I'm doing right now is loading back up the stock settings that were in there because I found out that the problem was not actually the PID settings. It was actually a problem with the transmitter. So if you're using the Spectrum DX6i, the one last thing you're gonna to wanna to go do is go into the Dual Rate and Expo tab and set, that's the second tab here, to negative 100 on all three, that's aileron, elevator, and rudder, all three to negative 100. If this is set at zero, then your stick movements will not register as quickly. It will dampen your stick movements out but with them all at 100%, the aircraft 
is much more responsive and that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so I spent a long time getting this JJ Pro T1 bound to this transmitter here. Everything is nicely set up and nicely mapped. It did take a lot of work with this uh, Spectrum DXXi to get everything working, but it's freezing, freezing cold outside right now, but we need to get a little test flight. But you know what? That's exactly what these are designed for, is flying around indoors. So let's give it a little indoor test flight because these things are perfect indoor racers. So that's the JJ Pro T1 Nano FPV Racer. Great little racer, nice repositionable camera here. Not really the biggest fan of the uh, camera connection. It does actually have a plug there, which you would think is kind of nice, but gives us just a little bit of interference. I think it would be better to have a, a direct solder joint right there. But other than that, it flies great. It's a lot of fun. Decent price. It did take a lot of work to get this Spectrum DX6i connected and mapped and get, you know, everything working properly on it. I think the people who designed this probably used Tyrannus transmitters. Um, that was probably the most difficult part was trying to, you know, configure everything in clean flight. But once everything is set up, you know, it's a pretty decent flying aircraft. Definitely worth checking out this holiday season. Glad to see JJ Pro getting in on the nano racing FPV hobby. Of course, there are other JJ Pro nano quads there. The one pictured on the front of this box is not actually the aircraft that comes in the box. That, I believe, is the T2, and that is the T1. So, that's the JJ Pro T1 nano FPV racer. We really appreciate you guys tuning in to RC 101 with the Dallas Flyer today, and stay tuned for more.